session. So for those of you who are in this chat room, hello and welcome. My name is Kristen Shaw and I'm one of the trainers here at Back at You. I know you guys have been sitting down with Shalene um, recently for the past couple of trainings. Um, she is not in today, so I'm going to be taking over the marketing training for her. This session does take about 45 minutes to an hour. It's one of those sessions that we, I really like to go a little bit more in depth on um, just because there's so much that you can do within the marketing section of your back office. The goal is that through this session, you will be able to have an overview of all of the marketing tools available at your fingertips through the back office. Um, to respect everybody's time, I am going to be stopping asking questions periodically throughout this webinar. Um, as you know, with um, Shalene, it's going to be basically the same um, with your, her sessions. If you just want to put those questions into the chat box on the left-hand side, when I do those pauses throughout this session, I'll go ahead and get those questions answered for you. I am also recording this as well, so you will be receiving a copy of this recording in your inbox. Um, once it has rendered, that's usually about an hour to two hours after the webinar. And these recordings are available for 30 days as well. Since this is also your guys' last training, at the very end of the webinar, I'm going to show you a lot of other resources that you guys have um, when it comes to training and keeping up on learning everything within Office. Okay, so looking at your back office, um, here is your guys' um, back office, mycbstar.com. When you guys log in, obviously you get to your screen right here, your home dashboard. Now, some of the things that we're going to be able to do today is we're going to be covering marketing. So you guys will be able to utilize this marketing um, section on your home dashboard as well when things start populating there. So keep your eye on that as you're going through and doing all of your marketing. Um, but we are going to be spending a lot of time within this marketing tab right here. I'm going to start my way up at the top and kind of work my way down um, so you can see some of the things that you can do. I am going to jump over to my office demo account so I can play around in it, show you how to create pieces of marketing, how to attach those marketing to drip campaigns and to action plans and so forth. So when I go to my left hand side menu and I select the marketing button, the first thing that I'm going to see on, on here is my orders. Now, this is where I can go to open up a postcard ordering screen. So if hard copy mail is part of your guys' marketing plan, you do have the ability to order postcards through your back office. Um, as we're getting into postcard ordering, I do want you guys to know that these cards are about six by eight. Um, they are high gloss cards. They have UV coating on both sides. So there's these really big, beautiful, bright cards. Um, they're heavy, they feel great, um, they're not flimsy. The other thing I want to make sure that you know is there are two different postage options when it comes to these postcards. Um, you're going to have standard mail, which takes about 7 to 10 business days to deliver. Um, and then there's going to be first class, and that is going to take about 2 to 5 business days. So when you're going in and ordering your postcards, I do want you to be sure that you have that um, stat in mind when it comes to that ordering time. If you're doing an open house postcard um, over the end, you're gonna be holding it with, um, over the weekend, uh, first class might be a better postage option for you. So once again, I got there by going to my marketing tab and then selecting my orders. That brings me to my postcard ordering dashboard. Um, here is where you can see any orders that you've already placed if they're pending, if they're saved, if they've been mailed out, um, whatever that um, status is, you will see that right here. You are also able to go in and on your upper right hand corner, you'll see a plus order button. That's where I can go ahead and start a new postcard order. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up that postcard ordering wizard. Once again, all of these cards that you see here on your screen are about six by eight um, high gloss cards. So the first step that you need to do is you need to choose the template of the card that you want to order. You can either scroll through all the cards like you see here, you can go ahead and scroll through them all. Or if I wanted to, I can utilize this category drop down menu. When I select that, you can see that we have grouped the postcards into um, certain categories for you. So perhaps I wanted to do a just listed postcard, I can do that just by selecting just listed. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to populate all of those just listed postcards for me. Here I can go ahead and uh, see the front and the back of the postcards by pressing those little arrow buttons. Now, when you're looking at postcards, you are able to edit the text on the postcard and you're able to edit all the photos on the text um, postcard. So when you're looking at them, you really want to pay attention to the layout of the postcard and the colors on the postcard because those are going to be the two things that you cannot change. So you just want to make sure that the layout is something that you like and the colors are something that you would like. Everything else you can go ahead and edit. So if I like this postcard right here, I'm just going to hit that select button and it's going to pop up a screen where I can start editing that postcard. Now, like I said, you can edit all of the text. All I would do is select the line of the text that I wanted to um, change. Perhaps I didn't want this to say neighborhood. Maybe I wanted it to say area with an exclamation point. You can put that on in there and I'll see that automatically change for me. Um, once again, every single line you can go ahead and change. Now, this is a just listed postcard. Same thing with a, a buyer's postcard. Maybe it's an open house postcard. You have the ability to actually attach a listing to these postcards. That's going to do two things for me. It's going to fill in this little listing address bracket for me. And it's also going to populate all of the photos of that MLS over for me to utilize for this postcard. So to attach a property, if you look in the upper right hand corner, you're going to see a select property button right here. Select that um, option and it's going to pop open a window where I can select what property I want to utilize. Now you have some buttons up on top to help you filter through with the listings. If you just want to view your company listings, you can. If you want to view all of the listings in the MLS, you are able to. That's a great thing to utilize. Maybe you're holding an open house open for a um, listing that's not listed by your company, but you're holding it open because maybe it's a neighborhood that you're farming. You can go ahead and create a postcard for it still. And with status, you can have active status or all status. The great thing about that is if you are um, holding, we're sending out a just sold postcard and it has a status of sold already, um, you can go ahead and select that all and see all of those. Okay, so once you have your um, filter set up here, you can also type in that address if you wanted to find the address you wanted to attach to the postcard or you can literally just scroll through everything right here. Once you see the address that you want to connect to the postcard, you're just going to select that little check mark button and it will go ahead and start populating in all of those things for the postcard. And I do apologize, this is a demo account, so sometimes I have to go in twice to get that property to attach just because it is a demo. Let me try refreshing that screen because it shouldn't take that long for you guys. I don't want you sitting there waiting on my computer here. Let me go back and hit plus order. Get back to that just sold or just listed postcard. Hit select. I'm going to go ahead and hit select property. I'm just going to select a different property from the list so it doesn't do that for you guys. Um, let's go ahead and see if I can get this one. What we have is we have a demo account that has some fake listings in it. So Every once in a while, the system says, hey, I know this is a fake listing. I'm not creating a postcard on it. So I do apologize for that. Okay, so once that populates on over, you will see that my address has updated down here um, within the wording to put that address in. Um, and I'm also able to edit those photos now, right? Now, every photo on the postcard in the upper right-hand corner is going to have that little photo icon. I can change my agent photo. There's my brokerage photo. But if I select that photo, my little photo editing tool is going to populate. I can zoom in on a picture. I can zoom out. I can change the orientation of the photo. Perhaps I wanted to upload my own photo. I can do that. Or I can select this little photo button right here, which will bring up all of the photos in the MLS. And once again, I do apologize. I picked a listing that did not have more than two photos in the MLS there. So you would literally just hit the select button and that photo will then populate on that postcard for you. Same thing on the back of the postcard. Um, it's pulling over some stock photos uh, from the postcard for me to utilize here. Then I have that same option. I can select all of those photos and that same exact photo editing bar will go ahead and appear 
where I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can do what I need to with those photos to get the postcard set up the way that I want it. Um, same thing with all of the language on the back of the postcard. I can go ahead and click on it and it will change. I can get change that language if that's something I wanted to do. Once you have the postcard set up the way that you want it, you're just gonna hit that save and continue button um, to go to your next screen where it's going to want you to fill in some order details. Now, some things to note on this page, you must have an order of 25 postcards. That's just the minimum that we have for this ordering system. So I wanted to point that out. And then down at the bottom, there are those shipping options. Remember when I first started this um, postcard ordering system, I wanted to let you know that the standard mail is about seven to 10 business days. And that first class shipping does take that down to two to five business days. So you are able to connect people to this postcard who you want to receive this postcard three different ways. I can utilize just one of these ways or I can utilize a combination of them if I need it to. I can select from my contact types. So remember when you went through your CRM training with Shalene and she mentioned those contact types and how contact types are a great thing to utilize when it comes to marketing. That is what we're gonna be doing a lot of today. You're gonna to see me really utilizing the contact types within my CRM. So perhaps I have this just listed postcard and I have a whole bunch of first time home buyers or renters or active buyer contact types attached to my contacts that are those types. I can come in to hit select contact types, find all those contact types over here um, and send them over if that is what I wanted to do. So prospective buyer, I wanna send that over. Um, I want to send it over here. You can go ahead and do that. And that way you can send that postcard to the people within that contact type. Now you are also able to import a, your own CSV file. So perhaps you're working with a title company who provided you with an Excel spreadsheet of people that you want to send this postcard to. You can easily upload that here. Or you can utilize Target 360 mailing. What Target 360 mailing does is it does take the address that you connected to the postcard and you're able to come in here and say how many cards do you want. Let's say I'm doing that 25 minimum or maybe I wanted to go up to 30. And it's going to take these 30 cards and send them to the 30 nearest residences around this address right here. It's a really great way to hit up those neighborhoods to let the um, people within that neighborhood know that one of the home homes, maybe their neighbors have gone up for sale. So if they know somebody that they want to be their neighbor or if they're, maybe they have family looking to move to town, um, they will be alerted when they receive this postcard. Um, you are also able to type in whatever address you want to type in right here. So if you didn't want to send it out to this neighborhood, but maybe you have another neighborhood you want to go ahead and send that out to, you can type in an address there and then it would send those postcards to the 30 nearest residences around that address. Once again, with those shipping options, you can select them easily right here. Um, as you can see, when I come over here to this order summary screen, there will be a price difference there as well. Um, so within that order summary screen, I'll see who I'm sending it to. So I have 30, 360 recipients selected. Um, also, I will see that price per item. Um, usually it is $1.15 per postcard for that first class mail. We are running a promo that is 20 cents off on all of our postcards. If I were to come in here and select standard mailing, I would see that change as well, 75 cents instead of 95 cents right there. I will see that total. So for these 30 postcards, I'm looking at $22.50 right now. Um, so I can see all of that right there. I do not know how long this promo is running. I have seen it on here for about a month though. Um, so I do know we've had it for a little bit. So once you have um, that all figured out with saying who you want to send that postcard to and how many and your shipping options filled out, you're just gonna hit that save and continue button. Now this is gonna be the last page where I can go in and I can verify that everything looks correct on my card. Once this preview loads, it's gonna be this nice big blow up of the postcard, of the front and the back. So I can make sure that everything looks correct on here. I'll also see that order summary pop populate over here to make sure everything looks correct. I can then put in that payment information for those postcards. 
If I find myself ordering postcards a lot and I don't want to have to enter in my payment information, I can always have that saved. And then here's where you would type in your name to confirm that everything looks correct with this postcard and that this is the order that you want to place. Once you type your name in there and hit pay and finish, we will then start processing that postcard order for you. You are gonna be able to see all of those postcard orders that you have placed um, or that are saved and maybe you haven't gotten to the payment screen yet right here along this um, dashboard right here. You will also see them on your home dashboard. So when we started this webinar, I did say you will be able to use this marketing activity section a lot on your dashboard. Here is where I can see that postcard order um, that I have pending um, and just saved and getting ready for payment. If I wanted to start a new postcard order straight from right here, I can do that as well by selecting that new project and then going to create postcard, which takes me to that postcard ordering wizard once again. Okay. So that is the first tool that you guys have access to within your marketing system. Um, are there any questions on that postcard ordering system before I jump into creating content in your print and email marketing? Once again, if you have any questions, just make sure to type them in that left-hand side chat box and I will answer them as we go through this webinar. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to um, creating content. Now, the reason why it's important to create all of your content first is because you can attach all of that content to drip campaigns, um, to email campaigns, to those action plans that you've been hearing so much about in the past couple of webinars. And the reason you need to have it uh, created first is because you need to tell the system what it's sending, right? I can't send out all of these emails in a drip campaign or I can't send out an automatic system email within an action plan. Um, the system's not gonna know what to send if you haven't had that piece created. So what we're going to do right now is we're gonna go in and start creating some content. So let's go ahead and pretend that I wanna create content um, and I wanna create drip email campaigns and I wanna attach it to a lead action plan. I am um, on, let's pretend I'm on Shelly's website and I submit a um, want to know more information about this property. I'm on her website. I see a property that I like. So I hit that little more information area button. Shelly then gets a lead that comes into the system, um, letting her know that, hey, Kristen really wants to know more about this property. Shelly can then add me to a lead action plan which will start sending out all of that content that we're gonna create for her. It's gonna send out those automatic emails for me, for her, to me. It's going to send me all of these drip email campaigns that she attaches me to. So let's go ahead and get that um, created and pretend that this is our example so you can really see how we can start with that funnel, getting that content created, attaching it to those marketing drip market um, campaigns and attaching it to the action plans. Now remember, you can use this for anything. This is just gonna be one of our examples. You can use it for sellers, new home buyers, you can do whatever it is that you want to with this, but we're gonna use this as our example. So let's go ahead and jump into our content and create a letter that she would want to send out to me, have the system send out to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that marketing tab on my left-hand side menu. And I'm gonna to wanna to go to my content dashboard and I'm gonna get there by hitting one of these My Saved Content um, links. You're gonna see two of them, one under print marketing and one under e-marketing. It doesn't matter which one that you guys click, it's all gonna take you to the same exact place, which is your marketing dashboard. Um, this is where you're going to see all of the saved content that you guys um, have created already. If your company has created any content for you to utilize, you will see that populate underneath the content tab or the company tab up on top as well. Now, once again, all of your stuff will be here underneath this personal tab. To go in and create your first piece of content, you're gonna hit this add content button in the upper right-hand corner. And it's gonna pop open a window where I can see all of the templates that I can start utilizing to start building up my content. Um, I can decipher between email and printable content if I wanted to. Um, I can see those back at you templates or company templates. When I select this category, I can see all of the 
different types of content that are in here for me to start utilizing and creating and making my own. You also have what's called blank content right here. As you can see, I have blank content one, two, three, four, and five. These are great pieces to utilize if you want to create something all your own. So for this example of me submitting a um, request for more information on a piece of property on Shelly's website, we're going to go ahead and create a couple of different pieces of content that she's going to want this lead to receive. The first one is just going to be a basic email that says, hey, I received your request. I'm with some clients right now. I will be getting up with you shortly. So to create that piece, I'm going to utilize this blank content number one, and I'm going to hit that select button. It's going to pop up my details page where I can go ahead and start giving some details and creating this piece of content. The first thing that you want to do is you want to give this piece of content a name. So maybe it's just something like I received your request email or something like that. So I know what this piece of content is. So when I go to attach it to an action plan, I can easily find it. Or if I just wanted to email it straight to somebody, I can go ahead and find it easily then. Then here under this content, you'll see this box that I can click on going to populate that box open where I can start building my piece of content. So maybe I want this to say hello, and then I want that contact's first name to fill in. You can hit that. Um, and I'll explain what this add to text field is in just a little bit. And it says, I received your request on my website. I am with a client at the moment, but will be getting that information you requested to you shortly. In the meantime, feel free to text me that. Then I can come in here and once again utilize one of these fields, and I will be telling you what these fields do in just a little bit. Uh, talk to you soon. Whatever it is that you want to say, once again, I'm creating an email that I want the system to automatically send for me when the lead comes in. So it's going to say, once again, my name is Kristen. I'm on Shelby's website. It's going to say, hello, Kristen. I received your request on my website. I am with a client. In the meantime, feel free to text me at um, 123-456-7890, whatever that cell phone number is. So when you utilize this add to text area, as you can see, when I scroll through it, there are a whole bunch of different things that you can utilize. These will all pull from a, um, a field within your office. So the contact first name, a contact last name, all of that will pull from your customer relations CRM tab. So um, when I went in and I put in my name in that request, it knows that my name is Kristen. So this email will then say, hello, Kristen, and it will fill that in for me. When it comes to this agent stuff from agent email, agent website address, agent phone number, all of that pulls from your agent profile. So it really goes ahead and kind of fills in these fields for you, making this a more personalized letter. So the person, the lead will really be Think that you jumped on really quick, send them a quick email um, just to let them know that you will be with them shortly. So this is what you can go ahead and create. Just an example. I'm going to go ahead and hit that OK button. Now that I have this piece of content created, there's going to be several things that I can start doing over here. Um, Benjamin, I do see your question about sharing this content on social media, and I will be getting to that when I hit the Save and Share button. It's going to be awesome. I'll show you. So, now that I have a piece of content created, there's going to be several things that I can do with this content. If I want to save and get HTML, maybe I want to embed this piece of content into a blog, I can do that. I can save and print this piece of content. So if I came in and created a flyer, I can come in and save and print it. Um, when you are doing save and print, just make sure that you have your pop-up blocker turned off because I don't want, um, it pops up a PDF, a window with a PDF. So if you have that pop-up blocker on, you will not see that PDF pop up to print. You can save and email it. So if you just created a quick little email and you wanted to hit save and email and send that to people within your system, you can do that as well. Um, then you can also save and share. So Benjamin, this will be answering your question. This is where you can come in and send this to social media. 
So if I created a piece of content in here and I come in and click this save and share button, I will see that piece of content. Just know if you're using those brackets, it will take that, um, it will be blank right there if you're using brackets into social media because it doesn't have somebody that you're merging it with, right? It doesn't know who you're sending it to in particular. And here's why you can come over and share that uh, piece over in these social media links. You can also click to download that image if you wanted to as well. Or you can go ahead and just hit save. And when you hit save, the piece of content will then save within your content dashboard. Now, when I get out of this piece right here, if I wanted to find that piece of content, um, I would be able to scroll down and find that piece of content right here. I received your request. From here, I can print, email, share on social media, edit, or delete as well. So you do have those options once you create a piece of content um, to share, print, email, whatever it is that you want to do. So let's go ahead and utilize a blank content again. I'm going to utilize one with a photo so you can see how we can do that. Let's go ahead and hit add content. And maybe I also want to build um, some letters that they can receive in regards to the buying process. They're interested in a home. So maybe I also want to have emails that they can receive about the home buying process. Let's go ahead and utilize blank content number two for that. I'm going to hit select. Um, maybe I want this to be a difference between pre-approval and prequel. A letter just explaining the differences. You can do that. Once again, when I see this little photo right here, this little icon, I know I can attach a photo there. So when I select it, I'm going to see the same options that I would have on my website. I have company images that I can utilize, um, any images that you have uploaded to the system, or you can come in here and upload your own photo if you wanted to. Let's just go ahead and utilize this photo right here. I'll see that populate in. Hit save, and then that pops right on into my piece of content. Then I can start typing that letter once again. The difference, oh, and I apologize about my atrocious typing today, uh, between pre-approval and pre-qualification is, and then whatever you want to type in, maybe you want to create a series of emails that they receive about the home buying process, you can go ahead and do that. Hit OK, that piece of content will then be created. Once again, the same options in the upper right-hand corner. Save and get HTML, save and print, save and email, save and share, or just save. You can do that. Perhaps you want another piece of content. Let's go ahead and hit Add Content again. Um, you want to have an agent introduction letter. Maybe you want to have a letter talking about who you are and how you can help. Let's go ahead and do that. Intro letter or buyer. I'm going to go ahead and hit that little picture button. Maybe I wanted to upload one of my personal photos to make it look a little bit more personable. And down here, maybe I want to say, allow me to introduce myself and what and how I can help you during the home buying process. And then I can go on and explain that letter down there or explain what I can do for them. Um, once I once again, once I have that done, I'm just going to go up and hit that save button. So as you can see, I'm starting to build up my content so I can go in and build the drip campaigns. I can go in and attach these pieces of content to action plans and so forth. Now, before we jump in to um, drip campaigns, um, which are those email campaigns that you can send out, series of emails that you can send out. Are there any questions whatsoever about how to create content? Once again, we got to this content area by going to our marketing tab, and then we see my saved content. Either one takes you to this content dashboard, where you can start seeing the content that you are personally are creating or that the company has created for you. Once again, you can create as much content as you want. When I hit this add content button and utilize that category drop down menu, and I do apologize, my computer's taking a while to get up to my voice here. Um, I can see all the different types of content in there, right? Utilize blank content. So I can really show you how to create your own individualized pieces of content. 
Um, you can see there, there's ease blast in here. There's holiday cards. There's letters already in here for you. So if you wanted to look at some of these letters to see if you wanted to utilize those, you can. There's newsletters and those property flyers as well. So really get familiar with the type of content that's already in there for you to utilize. Start creating that content that you yourself want to utilize as well. Okay, so when it comes to e-marketing, what I'm really gonna talk about today is that those drip email campaigns. Basically what those are is just a series of emails that you have set to go out. Um, touching back on your CRM training that we did, this is another area where those contact types become very useful to you um, because once again, maybe you are creating a um, drip email campaign that talks about the process of selling your home. Um, so you have a first email that gets sent out that talks about um, getting your home ready for inspection. Maybe the second one is tips. Maybe a third one is um, now that your house is sold, what do you do next? Um, maybe you have a series of emails set up like that and you want to go ahead and send it to people within your CRM that have that contact type of seller attached to them or a, a prospective seller. You can go ahead and do that really easily. So let's go ahead and create a campaign. Once again, we're going to take that um, the example of me visiting Shelly's website. I submitted a um, request on her website to know more about a piece of property. So let's create a campaign that she can go ahead and send to me via, um, via email. So I'm going to visit that marketing tab on that left-hand side menu. And then underneath my e-marketing section, I'm going to hit my campaigns. This takes you to your campaign dashboard. Now on here, you're gonna see uh, some tabs along the top. You're gonna see all of your campaigns. If you wanted to view any campaigns that your company has built for you to utilize, you can do that. And you're gonna see um, a company and campaigns. Well. So if you wanted to view them all, you can do that as well. Now, when it comes to your company campaigns, you're gonna see two different types of campaigns. You're gonna see an event campaign and a contact campaign. What a contact campaign is, is it means that you can go ahead and um, add pieces of marketing to that campaign. Um, so they already, they control the contacts. They have a list of contacts. And if you have a, um, maybe a flyer for a new listing that you wanted to send to this list of contacts, you can go ahead and do that. And then you're going to see event campaigns and event campaigns are where the company controls the events. So they created a whole bunch of different events to go out with this campaign, different emails to go out, and you can add your contacts to that campaign. Once again, underneath your contact, your My Campaigns tab, you're gonna see all of the different campaigns that you yourself have created for you to utilize. So to create our campaign, let's go into the upper right-hand corner and click Plus Campaign. That's going to pop open a window where we can start building our first email that we want to happen within this campaign. The first thing we want to do is give this campaign a name. So maybe I want to call this prospective buyer campaign. Because once again, I submitted a request on wanting to know more about a property. So maybe I'm a prospective buyer. And I can also narrow it down by category if I wanted to. If you want to see the camp, the content that you created, you can scroll through here. You can see company content or you can see the content that you yourself have created. I'm going to select my content right here because I'm going to want to attach some pieces of content that I have created myself. So let's go ahead and find um, maybe that difference between pre-approval and pre-qualification letter that we've created and hit select. I'm going to see that letter populate right down here. And now I can come in and start giving details about this first camp, this first email that I want to be sent out in this campaign. The subject is going to be that subject line in the email. So maybe I want to say something like, did you know the difference? Something like that. I can type that in. Now, as you can see, that title went ahead and changed for me as well. The reason why we have a subject in the title is because every once in a while in a subject line, we put more of a clickbait subject line in there. Um, something like, hey, check this out or something like that. Um, the title gives us a chance and only we can see the title. The, the person who receives the email cannot see it. 
but it gives us a chance to let us see what that email actually is. So maybe if I just want to put pre-qual versus pre-approved right here, that way I know what this email was because I might not know what that email contained just based on that subject. And then I need to come in here and say, how do I want this to send? So utilizing this drop-down menu, I can send this a couple of different ways. I can send this on a specific date. So if I came in here and I selected on Saturday for this to send, this email would then send to anybody who's connected to this drip campaign um, on Saturday. Now, if I were to add somebody on Sunday the 7th, um, that email will not send to that person because I told the system I only want this email to send on the 6th. Where we see this date being used is maybe you want to create an open house campaign. So um, Sunday you take a listing, Monday you create an open house um, to host over the weekend. So you create an open house campaign. Monday you're sending a letter to um, all of your, an email to all of your um, prospective buyers, letting them know that there's an open house coming. Maybe on Wednesday, you go ahead and have an email sent out to them about a flyer of that open house. And maybe on Friday, just a reminder that the open house is happening. So that's where we see that date happening a lot within the email drip marketing. You can utilize a month. So maybe I want this email to send out on May 1st. If I selected that, this email would send out May 1st um, year after year after year on that date. Where we see people really utilizing this is maybe they have an annual holiday charity that they like to remind people of. So it sends out on December 1st or, May, or uh, November 1st, letting them know about that. Maybe you have a list of spring cleaning um, checklists that you want to send out year after year after year to your clients. You can do that as well. We have holiday and birthday, and I will be utilizing these a little bit because I know when you talked with Shalene about that CRM, she mentioned that we had birthday cards to send out. So I will be adding those as well so you can see that. But if I came in here and selected Cinco de Mayo, then I know this email would send out um, year after year after year on Cinco de Mayo. Obviously, I don't want to utilize that either. I'm going to skip interval right now because that is what I'm going to be utilizing, but I want to talk about the others first. Day of the week kind of works like that um, month function. So if I were to send this out, say days of the week on Friday, this email would send out Friday after Friday after Friday after Friday until I deactivated this, um, this campaign. So where we see this being used a lot is something like a, um, a Monday motivational email, or maybe you wanna send out an email every Friday about the different things happening within the community different events and so forth, you can do that there. You also have those buyer transaction dates and those seller transaction dates. So much like when you went through your CRM training with Shalina, she talked about that birth date. She also hit that section where you can put in their buyer transaction dates. We do have home anniversary cards for you to utilize. So if I were utilizing a home anniversary card and I wanted it to send out one year after they bought their home, I can do that. And I'm going to go back to the interval because this is something that it gets used most when it comes to these drip campaigns. Because what that is saying is this is the first email I want anybody to receive as soon as they are attached to this campaign. So if I went and I attached Carol on Friday this, to this campaign, she would receive this email on Friday. If I went ahead and attached Eric to this campaign on Tuesday, he would then receive this email on Tuesday. So it's giving an order of how you want those emails to go out. Doesn't matter on when you attach a person to a campaign, this is the order of how they will receive their emails. So I'm gonna utilize interval for this one because every time I add somebody to this um, campaign, this is the first email that I want them to receive. The other box that you wanna make sure that you are filling out is the send after any time. Um, I do suggest not leaving it on any time because if you do, this will send out at midnight 01. And of course, as you know, that looks very automated to people. I always suggest sending it out in a time during the morning because uh, most people check their email in the morning. First thing they do when they get into the office. Um, we always check our text messages when we wake up and then check our emails at the office. That seems to be the most common. So I like to say send it out during a time that you know that somebody is probably going to be in their email or send it out at a time that you are most likely going to be in your email because if they respond to it, 
right away, then you are already in your email and then you can respond as well. So um, I always make sure to have that send after time filled out. Once again, I can see my content piece right there. I'm just gonna hit next, say continue. And then my first piece of content, my first email in this drip email campaign has been created. Now, if I wanted to attach a recipient to this, I could, but I'm not going to right now because I want to complete this campaign before I attach anybody to it to make sure it looks good. So I'm just going to hit finish and then I'm going to hit done. Now on my campaign dashboard, I can see that prospective buyer campaign and I can see I have one event happening. To add more events to this campaign, I'm simply going to select that campaign. When I select that campaign, I'm taken to its individual dashboard where I can see that one event happening on the day um, they receive this, the day that they're added to that campaign. To add another event in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to select plus event. And then I'm going to add my second piece here. So maybe I want to go ahead and I know I created under my content that introduction letter. So let me type intro, find that introduction letter that I created, hit select. I'll see that introduction letter pop up right here. Maybe I want to say, allow me to introduce myself. I want this to be the second email that they receive when they are added to this content or to this campaign. I'm going to select a time, hit finish, hit continue, hit done, and then I'm going to see that second um, email populate within that. So now, um, if I were to add Erica to this trip campaign, on day one, she's going to receive that pre-fall versus pre-approval um, email that I created, and then the second day, she's going to receive this allow me to introduce myself email. You can keep adding events. Even though I'm on the interval for these two, doesn't mean I have to stay on an interval level. So if I wanted to come in here and perhaps I wanted to have um, a, let's select Halloween card, and I like this Halloween card right here, and I wanted to add some holiday cards in here. Happy Halloween, I can do that. Once again, I utilize that holiday birthday and I would come in here and select Halloween, select a time, hit finish, hit done. And as you can see, I can start building out this email campaign right here. Now let me show you those buyer campaign, uh, or those buyer uh, holiday, what do you call them? Holiday, um, I am failing at the word there. Let's see, it's under event, home anniversary. That's what I was looking for, those home anniversary cards. Remember when you went through that training with Shalene, she put, you can put those transaction dates in there when they bought a house. So if I wanted to utilize this card, I can come in here and say happy home anniversary on your home. Utilize that buyer transaction date and say one year. Once again, select my time. And now I know that on their home anniversary, they will receive a card saying happy home anniversary in your new home. Hit finish. Once again, really start building out that campaign right there. Now, if I wanted to add any recipients to this campaign, I can easily do that by hitting this plus recipients button in the upper right hand corner. Once again, I can utilize my contact types. So if this is a prospective buyer campaign and I wanna send this out to all of my prospective buyers, I can easily do that. If I wanted to search everybody within my contact CRM, I can do that as well. Um, so you do have those options. Are there any questions on drip campaigns before we move into that action plan realm so we can start talking about those action plans? Once again, if you have any questions, just plug them into that chat box on the left-hand side and I'll get those answered. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how we can kind of string all of this together. How do you create a comprehensive plan to manage all that you have to do with your contacts and with your listings? You can go ahead and create action plans to really help you keep on top of your contacts and your leads and also your listings. I know we've been talking about action plans as we've gone through these trainings. So now we're really going to touch on those action plans and how to create those. 
So I'm going to go ahead and touch on my tools and preferences button on my left hand side menu. And then I'm going to go down to my action plans. When you select that option, your action plan dashboard will appear. If your company has created any action plans for you to utilize, you will see those as well. But here's where you can go ahead and start building those action plans. So when you think of action plans, action plans are a series of events that you want to happen for these people. So jumping back to our example, I am on Shelly's website. I submit a request to find out more information on a property. That lead comes into the system. She can add me to an action plan. So all of these items will start taking place for her. So let's go ahead and create that action plan. We're going to hit this plus new button in the upper right hand um, corner. And I'm just going to call it a new buyer action plan. Right? I sound like a new buyer coming into the system because I'm questioning. I want to know more about a piece of property. Then I want to say, who do I want to attach this action plan to? Do I want to attach it to my contacts and leads? Or do I want it to be an action plan that I can attach to my listings? We are going to be going over both of those. This one is just going to be contacts and leads. So I'm going to hit save. Then I'm going to see that action plan um, details page right here. I can see that name, that type, and I'm going to see this item box where I can begin to add those individual action plan items. So to add my first item, I'm going to hit this plus button. And you're going to see I have some options. I can have an automatic system email happen for me. I can be reminded to do some follow up. And I can add this person to a campaign, have them automatically added to a campaign for me. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize all of these so you can see how that's done. Automatic system email. Maybe I just want this to be first response. Um, that's just how, what I'm going to title it so I know what it is. Maybe the subject is received your request. That's the email subject. So remember, I'm sending out an automatic system email. This is the subject of the email that I want to be sent out. When do you want this due? If you leave it at zero days um, and leave it at what you see here, that means immediately. So what it is saying is as soon as I attach a person to this action plan, they will immediately receive this automatic system email. I need to make sure that I select that email down in this content box right here. Once again, that's why you have to have your content created before you can attach it to some place because you need to tell the system what it is sending. So I'm going to select that and I know I created that I received your request email. It's the first one that we created together. Remember, it's the one that says, Dear Kristen, I received your request. I'm with a client at the moment. I will be getting back to you shortly. In the meantime, this is my cell number if you have any questions. Um, if I wanted to, I can say I want this to do a day after. Um, but once again, having that immediate system email sent for you is really great because as you know, the quicker you reach a contact, the more or a lead, and the more in contact you are with that lead, the higher the probability from that lead becoming a buyer or a seller. Do I want this to repeat? Yes or no? I'm going to say no because I only want them to receive this email once. I want to send it, make it look like it's coming from me. If you want it to look like it's coming from the system, you can. If you're working on a team and you want the owner of the agent, which is um, for the lead, which is most likely the team leader, for it to look like it's coming from them, you can, or you can have it come from you. If you need to BCC or CC anybody on this, you can. Maybe you have an assistant that you want to keep tabs on things. You can go ahead and CC or BCC them. We've already selected that content. And then I need to say, who do I want to send this to? I want this email to send to that contact or lead that's coming into the system. Then I'm going to press save and I'm going to see that first action item appear. Let's go ahead and add some extra ones so you can see what that's like. Maybe I want to add them to the campaign, add to prospective buyers campaign. Um, I want this to happen a day after they get attached to this action plan come down here and select the campaign that I want them to be attached to. Now remember the reason why we gave that campaign a name is because if you don't name your campaign, this is what it will look like when you go to select which campaign you want them to receive. Once again, you're not going to know which campaign is which after you've been creating a, a multitude of them. I know I created that prospective buyer campaign. 
So I'm going to hit OK, hit Save, and now I have my second action item done. So I know as soon as I add somebody to this action plan, they will immediately get that system email from me. And then the very next day, they're going to be added to that campaign and start receiving those campaign emails. Once again, I have three emails set up in that buyer's campaign plus this. So I already know they're going to get four emails from me automatically from the system without me having to do anything. Let's go ahead and utilize our next option, this follow-up request. So this is just text or call client. This is just a follow-up request is considered those manual follow-up um, requests. So um, these are manual to-do items. So maybe I just want to call or text client about the home buying process, put that in there. Maybe I want this due on the second, the third day that I add them to um, this action plan. I can come down here and say, if I want this to repeat, I'm going to say yes. Um, you can have it repeat for different counts if you want it to. So maybe I want every other day to be reminded to call or text this person. Because remember, once again, um, the more that you are in contact with these people, the more that you're reaching out to them, the higher the probability that they go from being a lead to an actual buyer or seller. And I want to be reminded to do that five times. So every two days, I'm going to be reminded to follow up with this person. And that's going to happen five times for me. I'm going to go ahead and press that save button. And I'll see that, that um, populated there. So now I know, um, once again, I'm visiting Shelly's website. I fill out that request for Shelly. She now has this action plan filled out. So when that lead comes into the system, she can attach this lead to this action plan. I will receive that email, that first response email that says, hi, I received your request. I'm out of the office with the client at the moment. Then I know I'm going to receive that buyer campaign. I'm going to be put on that buyer campaign. So I'll receive that email that's introducing herself. I'll receive that email that lets me know the difference about pre-qualification versus pre-approval. Um, I'll get those birthday emails and so forth. Um, and then I know that on the third day, she's going to be reminded to follow up with me. And she's going to get a notice saying, hey, you need to follow up with Kristen, see how she's doing, see what that lead is, um, see how that lead is going. So you can really create those comprehensive lead action plans that help you keep on top of those leads. Now, where we also see a lot of these action plans being used, which is a great idea as well, is for past clients in your SOI, right? So one of the hardest things about starting to get a, um, your CRM going is reminding yourself to keep in contact with all these people. How do you manage everybody within your CRM? You go in and create a past client action plan that simply reminds you to follow up with them once a month or once a quarter. That's a really great tool to have because then you're reminded to follow up with them once a month or once a quarter, whatever the time frame is that you want. Um, keeping you on top of them, right? Because the worst thing is logging into Facebook and seeing that the person you sold a house to five years ago is putting that house up for sale with another realtor. When you get in touch with them, hey, why didn't you use me? One of their most commonly heard things we hear is, oh, I didn't know you were still in real estate because I haven't heard from you, or um, I didn't know how to get in contact with you. When the system is reminding you to keep up with your past clients and contacts, it really makes it easy to eliminate that from happening. So once you have your action item built, I'm going to go into my customer relations tab and go to my contacts and leads. So I can show you how to attach these to your guys' contacts and leads. So we're going to pretend that it was this lead that came in. Let's see, this lead, that person that came in um, with that lead for Shelly. She can come here to her actions plan tab within that person's details screen and assign them to an action plan here. So as you can scroll through, when you hit that, you're going to see some action plans that your company has created for you. And you're going to see some action plans that Back at You has created for you to utilize. You will see all of those um, little uh, individual events that happen right here. So let's see, let's find that new buyer action plan that we created. I would hit that check mark button and hit save and it will populate that action plan for me right there. If you wanted to add more than one action plan to a person, you can totally do that as well. 
Now when I visit that action tab up on top, I'm going to see that new buyer action plan attached right here with those individual to-do items. I can come straight from this um, window if I wanted to, hit that three little dot button and complete that action if I needed to. What else, this is also going to populate on your home dashboard for you as well. So I attach this to Betsy. As I scroll down, I can see in two days, I am being reminded on my to-do section on my home dashboard to call or text Betsy right here. I can complete it straight from this window as well, or I can click on her name right here to be easily taken to that contact detail screen where I can see that action plan once again. This is also where you can add those drip email campaigns. So perhaps you just made a campaign that you don't really want to attach to an action plan. It's just a campaign that you created. Um, maybe it's a holiday campaign and you want them to receive a holiday card for um, every holiday in 2021. You just do hit save and it will add that person to that drip campaign. Now, great thing about utilizing those automatic system emails and those drip campaigns is this contact activity section right here. When they're opening those emails, you will be able to see that populate right here for you. So you really know that they're engaged with you. They're checking their emails. They're reading those emails and so forth. Now, if you guys create a basic new lead um, action plan, and let's say once again, I submitted that request for Shelly. Shelly is really out with a client at the moment. Um, so she can't really go into the system to attach me to the action plan to have that action plan take place. You can make it so that every time a new lead comes into the system, regardless of what lead source it's coming in from, so any lead that comes into the system, you can have it so they automatically get attached to an action plan if you want to. To do that, you're going to go to the account button in the upper right hand corner, select the profile button. And then you're going to go to your preferences tab. When you scroll down, you're going to see a section for default action plans where you can see new lead action plan. So if I created just a basic new lead action plan that sends out that automatic email for me so they know that I received their request and reminds me to follow up with that new lead, maybe adding them to a holiday campaign or whatever it is, I can come in here, hit that little button, the little magnifying glass, find the action plan that I want to attach them to, hit select, and now every time that a lead comes into the system, they will automatically get attached to this action plan for um, anybody. So it's really a great thing to utilize, uh, especially once again, if Shelly was really out at a meeting when I sent that request, she can rest assured that even though she's out at a meeting, she knows that an action plan is getting attached to her lead at the moment and those automatic system emails are going out for her. Now, before we end today's uh, session, I do want to touch on your action plans for your listings as well. You can go to that tools, um, tools and preferences button and scroll down to my action plans and you can create action plans for your listings. So if you have a listing that comes into the system and you want to follow an action plan for it, you can. I am going to show you one that I've already created here. It's a 12 point marketing action plan. So with these, I know that um, I can create all of the different, the same things that I can within a contact one. But when I select this, I'm going to see some additional things that I can do as well. I can be reminded to socially share that listing on social media. I can be reminded to order marketing items. I can be reminded to create a video tour or a virtual tour. Um, so you do have some additional items in here when it comes to those listing action plans. So with this one, I know as soon as I attach a listing to an action plan, the system is sending an email to my seller, letting them know that it is live. I'm being reminded to add my seller to the listing. Now, if you remember from your listing presentation with um, Shalene, when you add a seller to that listing, it creates that seller portal for them. Um, I know the system on day two is going to send them in a listing appreciation letter, thanking them for listing their house with me. I'm being reminded to share on Instagram and LinkedIn and being reminded to order the open house sign and so or the yard sign and so forth. So you do have those options right here. And I'm pretty sure she covered with you guys when you are creating an action item, 
for a listing, you do have the ability to make that visible to the seller on that portal. So if I did not want the seller to see this individual action item on their seller portal, I can take it and put it as no, so they can't see it on that portal. Now to attach an action plan to your listings, you're gonna go to your listings tab and then select listings again. And then you're going to see all of your listings populate all on your screen. Let me get to that right there. So if I wanted to attach a listing action plan to this address right here, I would just go up to the actions button, hit that add action plan, find that action plan that I want to attach to that listing, hit save, and now that action plan will then apply to that listing where I can start completing those items. All of these items will also populate on that to-do gauge for you as well so you know when you have things to do. Okay, you guys, I know it's a very, very big, um, broad overview of action plans, your marketing, um, all of that drip email that you can do as well. So I just wanna make sure before I let you guys go, there's not any questions about anything that we covered. Once again, if there's any questions, just plug those into that left-hand side. As a quick recap today, we went to our marketing tab where we learned where we can order and uh, postcards from that um, My Orders button right there. Remember, you can edit all of the photos on that postcard. You can edit the wording on the postcard, um, and you can send those out straight from the system. We also went ahead into the marketing tab and created content on our saved content dashboard, and we created those drip email campaigns where we can create whatever type of campaigns you want to. Um, and then we went into tools and preferences and we created those action plans. Now remember you can create action plans for your contacts and leads and you can create action plans for your listings as well. Let's see, we have Irene just asked, can we see what the email looks like on the delivered side? You sure can. One of the great ways to do that. So I'm going to go back into this buyer campaign. Um, so this system email right here you can easily put your address in here as well. So if I wanted to be CC'd on this, just to um, know that that email went out, so I can also see what that looks like, I can do that from an action plan point of view. You can actually do that too from your marketing point of view. So if I went into my saved content um, and I have a letter that I've created and I want to see what this looks like emailed, just come over here, click this save an email and email it to yourself. If you go ahead and email it to yourself straight from here, you will then see what that looks like um, for the, the person receiving it. Did that question answer that question for you, Irene? Okay. And I also learned how to attach those action plans to those contacts and leads and how to also attach those action plans to the listing. Now, the other thing that we covered really quick before we go is within your account button, when I select profile, and I go to that preferences tab, I do have a place under these default action plans. If I wanted a new lead action plan to automatically attach itself to every lead that came into the system um, from my website, I can do that. You can also do the same with those just listed action plans. So every time a new listing comes into the system, if you want an action plan to automatically attach, so you don't have to go and do that stuff yourself, you can do that. And you can also do that for every time that the system sees that there has been a just a uh, price reduction in one of your listings as well. Now, remember, you can add multiple action plans to people and you can add multiple action plans to your listings as well. So it's a really great way to keep you guys top of mind there. Um, I do know that this was your guys' last training with us, um, but do remember we are here if you have any questions. You guys have our support team email. I'm just going to go ahead and put it into the chat box really quick support at back at you.com in case you need to get in touch with anybody from that um, department. And I'm going to show you a couple of different resources. I'm going to plug this URL into the chat box as well for you guys to copy and paste. This is showtime.backatyou.com. This has all of our upcoming trainings here. So you're going to see two types of videos. You're going to see on-demand videos. All of these on-demand videos will always be on here for you guys to watch. So if you wanted to go ahead and watch um, that editing, more about editing your website or 
you needed to rewatch that lesson on listings, or if you wanted to learn more about this marketing um, webinar that we went over, you can come in here and view these at any time. Below the on-demand ones, you're going to see remote sessions. And remote sessions have an actual time and date that we hold those sessions. So we do have training on office systems every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you ever wanted to join any of those, you're more than welcome to. Um, this uh, Monday, we are going to be jumping into drip marketing campaigns and creating a seller appreciation campaign together, as well as a prospective buyer campaign. So if you want to learn more about those drip campaigns and really deep dive into them, you can join that class. Um, and as you can see, we have more creating that property watch, postcards, managing the home dashboard. So there's all these classes in here that you guys can go ahead and register for and join us. And the last thing I wanted to point out to you guys too is we do have a Facebook page specifically for um, Back at You users. So if you're using our Back at You um, system right here, we do have this web page. It's called where this Facebook group. It's called Back at You Office Minds. That you guys can join. It just connects you with all of the other agents who are using the system, as well as learning about any upcoming coming trainings and new features and so forth that we have. Okay, you guys, so be sure to join that Facebook group, save that showtime.backatyou.com page and constantly be checking and seeing what kind of trainings that we are having for you guys. I know today was a big, big section of marketing. There's so much to do within the marketing. Um, so definitely play around with it, get used to it. If you wanna email me some marketing pieces, um, feel free to as well. Okay, you guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Welcome to the Back at You family and um, have fun with Office. Let us know if you guys need anything else and we'll talk to you later. Thank you so much. Bye.